This conference Thank will now be recorded. Reminding me. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Let's see, clean screen application share. All right. Oh, I love it. I can still see you guys. Yay. There we go, huh? All right. Are you on? Can you see my embroidery software screen? Yep. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Got your hand out handy? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So we're not doing that nonsense of reset all module stuff. I don't like that. Anyhow, we're going to select um a blank canvas and i he doesn't say that but uh let's see he has us and if we need to change the size of it well i know we're going to do a 200 by 200 hoop okay if you want to go ahead and do your hoop at this point and natural is fine because it's square okay so now let's are you on the same screen i'm on you're in and you've set your hoop to 200 by 200 um i'm going to oh he did it different i'm going to go get to digitizing by going to the create tab and then selecting digitizing in there okay and please don't hit finish on that little pop-up window okay so now in our choices here we want to load or create a background picture which is the fourth one down in the list click on that and say next if you're not with me let me know okay so then we step four on page one, we're going to choose create new picture. And when we do that, then we are going to get popped into draw and paint. I'm gonna move this down out of my way. Oh, you're gonna be in my way here. Oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? Okay. Um, can I move you? Thank you. No, get over there. That's good. All right. Um, all righty. Well, this is going to be a pain. Excuse me while I fuss for a minute here. All right. It's not going to let me do anything. All right. Number step number five says click snap to grid, which is just to the right of the middle. You have a snap to grid and a snap to line. We want to use snap to grid. Okay. And why is anything? And then select the view tab. And we're going to click to our resize canvas and uncheck proportional lock and make sure that your two numbers are 200 and 200. And then click OK. So now we have a square grid here and it goes from minus 100 over to 100, so that's our 200 millimeters. Now, under our grid section here up on top, be sure that show grid is highlighted, this, that it's green like this, that the grid start is center, and the grid size is 5.0, and our subdivisions is none. All right, everybody got that set up? All right, if you don't, I'm waiting for you to holler at me. 
Then we want to go up to the very top and select the insert tab. And we're going to get us a shape. So we're going to expand our set of shapes. And there are 120 different shapes in here. These are the same shapes that you can access when you say um, quick create and look for shapes. So they're the same ones. For the our lesson today, we are wanting shape number 76, which is a teardrop shape. So click on that. Where Where is that? I don't insert. When I, did you expand your, on the, are you on the insert tab? Yes. Okay, and then over on the left, let me get out of here. Go back. Wait a sec. I go back to insert this this thing up here at the left. Where you and you have a drop down arrow. You, it shows you three shapes, and then it, over on the right hand side is a uh, symbol. The th bottom one, if you click on that, it opens up that window, and you can drag it out or scroll up and down in it. I found it. I, I clicked on the wrong insert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you want, do you have shape number 76 selected now? The Got teardrop? It. Got it. Oh, good. Okay, now, then way over here on the right-hand side, there's a section called line. And then to the right of that is this line with an X over top of it. If you highlight that, it's, is not going to put a line around your shape. If that is not highlighted, it will create a line around your shape rather than just the shape, okay? Does that make sense? All right, so in the fill area, if you click in that color area, which right now mine is purple, if I click in that, then I get a box of all sorts of colors. And he's, our, writer says to select a blue shape or a blue color so then your box should turn blue okay then we can come back up to the top by where we selected our shapes and there's <clears throat> a three shape symbol there that says insert shape we want to click on that to put the shape on our work area all right with that okay now i'm gonna have to move move things around here um now we want to go to what is called the transform and that is in the edit area over on the right hand side there is this up and down arrow and a curved arrow in a little box that's transform. So when I click on that, then I get a pop-up box and it tells me the size of my current shape and I can increase it proportion with percentages. I can increase it proportionally and for our purposes, we do not want proportional checks. So make sure that box is empty by proportional. And then we're gonna set our width, which is our top number here on the left, to 50 and hit tab and then highlight the second number, which is our height, and we want it to be 85. <clears throat> Okay, so now we have a, oops. am I getting, giving you feedback or what? So now our shape is 50 by 85 and we're gonna close. <clears throat> and let's see, number 19 on page two, it says select the multiply tab up here on top. It's the third one from the right. We're gonna pick the multiply tab. And then we are going to 
put in the following settings. We're going to use the circle feature, which to me that doesn't look like a circle, but okay. And over in the repeats box, we're instead of mine says four right now, I want it to say five. And okay. And we're going to move this one. Why didn't it do it? If I say circle and five repeats. And I don't want mirror on. Oh, okay. I say five, move the the, your shape so it's two grids from the top of the work area so you've got two grids up here and then the very top of the select box and you have one grid underneath it to the center of the work area okay and then way over here on the left it says apply multiply and I click that, which it's not. Why is it being that way? Five and that. Oh, I didn't. I didn't click enable multiply. I skipped number twenty. I hope you did number twenty. Okay. <clears throat> so did you manage to get a five petal shape in your work area? Yes. Good. All right. All righty. Um, if we do Control G on the keyboard, wait a minute. Click Apply Multiply. And yeah, excuse me, Judy. My Enable Multiply doesn't highlight. Oh, wait a minute. I guess it did. All right. I'm okay. Sorry. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one that's having a problem. Okay. It says do control G to group the petals. Well, <clears throat> it's not doing it. Hmm. Why isn't it doing it? Why can't I? Mine looks like you have to do the apply. You see where the apply is highlighted? There. Oh, okay. Now, now do yeah. control G. Now it's not doing it. <laughs> oh, wait. If I, no, you're just being a pain. No, I don't want that. One, two, three, four, five. Why won't it select all? All right, I did a control A to select all. Now I'm doing a control G and to group them, okay? Yeah, I had to select them all too. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, so we've got our outer flower and it's centered in our work area so now I we're going to this is so cool i didn't know I, you could do this on this on drawn paint it yeah it is really cool um if we go back to the draw tab now number 25 on page two we're gonna we had um snap to grid selected and now we don't want it to snap the grid. So we're gonna click on that and it should should now not be green, it should be white. So it's deselected, all right? Then we're gonna go number 27 to the view tab and we're gonna change our settings for the grid. We're gonna start at center, but this time we want 
10 millimeters for our grid size and our subdivision again is none. So now we are, our grid is much, is twice as big as it was. We're going to go back to the insert tab up on top and seven, our shape number 76 is still selected. And if there is anything selected on your work area, click outside of that so nothing is selected. And this time we're going to go back to the multiply tab. We're going to click enable multiply. And we're going to do the following settings. We're going to leave the circle setting selected. Our repeats are going to be five. And let's see. Drag Weren't this. we supposed to, Judy, did you skip um, 32 through 35? Yes, I did. Yes, I, my thumb was over them. Because I'm holding my thing, I'm sitting on a TV chair. Yes, I did, Mary. I'm sorry. Well, Let's good. Go back. Because I just thought I was getting old. <laughs> well, I am old, so that's my excuse. Okay, so we're gonna do. We did so insert 76 should be selected. And then we did click outside the work area, so nothing was selected. Oh, you know what? My page is turned backwards. All right, that's my problem because I took it apart so I could copy it for Jen. Okay, in the fill area of the right panel, we made that blue last time. Now we want to make it pink. I'm going to use the rose color because that other pink is really, really bright. You can use whatever pink you want, okay? And then we're going to go back to our insert shape number 33. And it puts it, it puts all five of them on top of each other in the middle of our blue flower. So we're going to again go back to transform over here on, on the right hand side under edit, our straight arrow and our curved arrow, our pop up box. We're going to change our, again, we do not want proportional checked. We're going to change our width to 30 millimeters and our height to 60. Okay, so now we got bigger petals. And click close. Then we're going to the multiply tab. We're going to in click on enable multiply hello and mine's not highlighting i don't know why all right um we're going to use the circle we're going to have five repeats um we're going to drag our one selected petal so it is centered at the bottom of is one grid up from the center of our grid like this okay so you can still see that little space in the middle and then it's one grid up to the bottom of that one petal and that has spread all of the petals out and he's, it says that the pink petals should almost meet then we click apply multiply so now over in our um, color bar here on the left um, we have the five shapes of the pink petals and now my all five of my my petals are all selected are yours all selected at this point if they are, if you press Control G, then now over in, in the film strip, you see two groups, a, a blue group, the outer flower, and a pink group, the inner flower. Is that what you have? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. Okay. All right. So we're so far so good. All right. It says drag your zoom slider, this little guy down here at the bottom, over to the right to zoom to the center of the flower. Drag the center of rotation mark, which is this right or left angled or 90 degree angle thing with two diamonds and a target thing. Drag that so your center of rotation is right in the middle of your work area. Be careful not to grab the diamond shaped parts. Just make sure that it's sitting right like that can you see mine probably not very well let me zoom up a little more so that's that's where your little center of rotation marker should be okay and now it says zoom to fit when my zoom to fit is hiding okay and click transform again and in the middle of our transform box we have a rotate thing and we can set he says set that to 1.5 and click close so it, it shifted the pink flower so it was more in line with the blue petals all right so now everybody ready for step 47 we're going to the draw tab and we're going to go back to turn on snap to grid over here on the top and we are going to select the insert tab again and I'm gonna get a different shape now. So we're gonna expand our box of shapes and pick shape number 79. It's a shape of a leaf. And click outside of our, right now our pink flower is still selected. So we wanna deselect it by clicking outside of the work area. And over in the right-hand side in that pink box that we had blue made pink now we want to make this green and you can use whatever green color you like that'll be fine and then we're going back up to the top and say insert shape and it puts a green leaf right smack dab in the middle of our flower and we're going to rearrange that a bit so we're going back to our transform over on the right hand side under edit in our pop-up box with proportional still not checked we're going to change the width to 40 and the height to 95 and then we are going to close all right that's all for page three page four number 56 we're going to click the multiply tab and click enable multiply and we're going to use the circle again and the five repeats again and we're going to drag the leaf down this time until it is centered in the bottom section of the work area as shown. So that means that it's like half a square, from the, the center of the work area and, well, come on, you're, you're not, oh, you can use your arrow keys. So it's, that's about where, it's about a half a square from the bottom of your work area, okay? 
and then we're going to click apply multiply and we're going to with every all of the five leaves selected we're going to do control g to make a group now and in the film strip now we have three groups we have the blue the pink and the green and at the bottom because our, our leaves are on top of our flower and that's not really where we want them we want to use the at the bottom of the film strip the arrow with a line on the top which is, is for go back we're going to put the leaves at the top of the list of the group and now the leaves are behind our flower okay all right everybody got their leaf their leaves behind the flower and everything looks good right all right so now we're on number 63 on page four we're going to the insert tab and we're going to get another different shape but this time we want shape number one a circle and we're going to make sure nothing is selected i have the leaves still selected yes can we take a two minute break i'm so far behind okay where are you lee uh, i've got a, a a leaf right in the center one leaf right in the center and i don't know what i've done wrong okay, okay you've got one leaf right in the center right yes okay um do you so you got a leaf it's right in the center um did you change the size of it with transform on number 54 on page three 54 i'm sorry to hold everybody up no 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 that's fine no problem this is 40. Lee, I pretty much just stopped, so you at least are keep going, kept going. <laughs> Transform nothing. I've got zeros and I can't change it. All right. Is your leaf you if you click on your leaf, does it put a box around it? Yeah, there. Okay. 40. Okay. 95. I've got that. All right. Now you're on page four. Select the multiply tab uh-huh enable multiply okay Set the phone. and you should still have the circle thing circle. selected and five repeats drag the leaf so it's good ah okay okay did you get five leaves? Yes. All right, and they're on top of your flower, right? Yes. Okay, so now you need to uh, do that um, control G to put them together as a group. Okay. And now in your film strip down at the very bottom, you control. have uh, the first Wait a minute, control. Control G. All Thanks. I have is one one leaf instead of you, five. Did you click that apply means, multiply? Yeah, she didn't hit the apply multiply. Did you drag the leaf oh, down okay, to the I bottom? Yeah, I got it now. Okay. okay, so now you got five leaves? Yes, okay, I'm with you now. <laughs> and there's a box around them? Yes. Now, Control G should make a group out of them in your film strip. Right. And now the the leaves are the third item in your film strip. Right. Drag them to the top. You can drag them to the top, or use that little icon down at the bottom, the arrow, the triangle with the line on top, which will yeah. put it up to the top. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, don't be. Yeah, don't so feel bad. We all get 
this Ray this Lane. is yes okay so where are you now lee what's in your film I, I'm, caught, I'm caught up with you you're caught up okay yeah. lee, other lee what happened yeah i got pretty far but then it, i just stopped because i couldn't keep up so it's okay <laughs> it's fine i'm sorry that's okay all right um, i'm just listening okay well right now mary and lee ward and i are on um page four number 63. all right i selected the insert tab and this time we want shape number one a circle all right and make sure that nothing is selected in your work area so click outside of that work area somewhere to deselect everything please and over in our box which is now green from making leaves we want to make it yellow all right and then we are going so we've got a circle selected and it's yellow nothing is selected in the work area we're going to insert our shape over here on the top next to all of our shapes, the insert shape button, and it should put a yellow circle right in the middle of our flower. And it says the default size of number 67 says the default size of 40 by 40 is the size we need. Well, I don't see anything on there. So if I click my transform box over here on the right, it tells me that my circle is indeed 40 by 40. So if you wanna know how to check it, then click your transform and look at the size that it shows you there, okay? Now, just to be safe, if we click file and save, and save this little guy, wherever come on open here i swore i did this okay so it says to save it as i'm just going to save it as flower because i don't want to type all of that it's going to save it in a format of ecq which is draw and paints format and this is just insurance in case we get messed up we can come back to draw and paint and get our flower back all right and now we can either do do what they say here in 68 we can click file oh we did say we can click file and use exit i'm in the habit of using the x over in the right hand corner to go back to digitizing because we came from digitizing and we're linked to go back so i'm going to close mine and it takes me right back into digitizing in the express design wizard and it has my picture there that i my flower that i created everybody back in to no. digitize <laughs> lost what <laughs> i do what okay where are you are you still in draw and paint i i went up and clicked the right like you did and it took me back to embroidery with a blank page oh how nice look down below do you have a digitizing underneath open no they all closed everything closed oh mm -hmm. You know what? I bet you you got because those windows are stacked. I bet you closed it. Um, okay, uh, Lee, uh, you're in just embroidery with a blank screen, right? Well, I just went back to digitizing. <laughs> you're in. 
how did you get to digitizing through create I did, I did create all right now are you, did the wizard come up yeah i what did i do now what a mess go on judy i'll figure it out no I wanna, I well if you're oh. if you're in digitizing and it it, you, it it gives you the options in the wizard Can, when you went to digitizing, what came up? Just a blank screen. Oh. All right now, now the wizard came up. Okay, so now go to load or create a new picture. You mean load an existing design? No, the fourth was the fourth option down okay. should say load right, or create. All right. And that should dump you into draw and paint, right? It says load a picture, choose a picture. Okay. If she saved so, it, did you save yeah, that's picture? What I'm, I'm trying to get her back to draw and paint to load it. Well, should, couldn't she just load her picture right there? It, or she has to load it in draw and paint. I think she has to load it in draw and paint because it's an ECQ. She can oh, try loading okay. it there. All right, okay. I've got it. All right, I'm in digitizing. I've got it loaded. You're wonderful. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Not today, I'm not. <laughs> well, yes, you are, because you got back to where you belong. Okay, so you're, you look kind of like my screen, maybe? Uh, I don't. I don't have the Express Design Wizard open. I'm in, I have just digitizing open. Okay, that's fine. Hang in there. All right. All right. So maybe we'll check, we'll catch up with you. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, file exit. Okay. On the choose picture page, we're going to say next. Mary, you with me? <laughs> on number 70 on page four? Yep. Yes. Okay. And then it says um, it shows our the rotate and crop picture page. Uh, we're just going to do next. It says we don't need to rotate or crop because it, it just fits. And then on the design size, we're going to say fit design to hoop. The top option. And we're going to make sure that our hoop is 200 by 200. If your hoop is not 200 by hoop 200, click on change hoop and change it to 200 by 200. All right, Lee, you okay? I think so. <laughs> I, I'm not. All right. I think I'm ahead of you now. I'm not sure. Okay, now we click finish. And now we are in our digitizing screen and we have our lovely flower up there. Okay. Yeah. Your screen look like mine, Lee? Yes. All right. So now we're on page five, number 75. We want to click on the view tab and drag the background slider here see where I am on, on my screen, this sl little slider here. We're going to dim our flower, not all the way, but just about halfway. So when we put something on top of it, we can tell whether it, it's actually there or whether we're just pretending it's there. OK, now we're going to select the point create tab we've got quick create freehand and we want and point we want point and i learned something here um color change if you just click color change it brings up the same box that if you click over in the color select thing i didn't know it did that anyhow we want to pick our thread colors and you want to be in Robeson Anton Rayon 40 for your thread type. 
And then in the box where you say find thread, you want to type in 2578. And that should come up with a harvest green color and click OK. So now in our film strip and over in the design panel, we have a color bar of green. OK. Now, I can't zoom to rectangle when that's in my way. I want to zoom to rectangle down here at the bottom and drag around a box around the bottom leaf. All right, so it enlarges it so I can play with it. And now up on the top, under options, the thing over here at the very right, we are going to click satin area, the middle one, and we are going to use the specifications in number 81. Our pattern number is going to be 270. Our density is going to be 11. Underlay, both of them are not checked and our compensation is zero. And we're going to say OK. So that has set us up for what we are going to use for the next step, number 82. We're going to click the satin area icon up here about the middle of that top bar and now we are going to create our leaf shape by setting points and over on your handout it shows you exactly where your points should be and whether they should be square or round so number one point goes up here at the top and it's square with our shift key down Number two also is square where the edge of top edge, left edge of the leaf is. Number three is round, no shift key. Number four is round, no shift key. Don't worry about the line being goofy. And number five then is square at the very tip of the leaf. And if yours doesn't quite fit, you can go back and shift your the spacing of your points until it follows the outline the top is always going to be straight don't worry about it because it's going to be underneath that flower petal okay everybody got their shape all right we're going to right click complete the object and we're going to right click again to turn off our tool. Now, when you right click, it puts in lines for your angles. And these have this pair of purple hexagonal handles at the each end of the line and they can be used to change the angle of your stitches, as you can see, when I'm moving this around here, you can change those by moving those points. Um, and the number of line, those lines that you get will vary based on the shape you create. For this shape, we really only need one set of control handles. So number 86 says, go to your home tab up here on the top left and under points, select delete points and click, click on these purple guys until you only have one set left. All right. Now, when you have one left, then right click to turn off your delete points and the edit points function will highlight. Now we're going to move our line, our purple points, 
to un, until it is parallel to the top of our leaf, just like that. Okay. Everybody got their purple line up on the top. Now we are going to move our start marker. So this little square with an S in it, put your cursor on it and drag it down to the bottom tip of the leaf. Come on, guy, come with me. No, I want that one. There he comes. Okay, so now he's down at the bottom of the leaf. On page six, right, number 92, we're, we now have the start point at the bottom and the end point at the top. Now we're going back and select our point create tab up here on top. And we're gonna click that satin area again, right here, kind of in the middle of this ribbon bar. And we are going to set five points again to define the right half of the leaf. We got the left half done, but we need to do the right half. And you should have a pink cursor up here at the very top where your end point was to start with. So we're gonna set the same kind of five points with a square point up at the top, a square point where they meet here on the right hand edge and two round points and a square point at the tip. Now we're going to right click again and right click to turn off the tool. We got those lines with the purple handles on them again. So we're going back, we need to get rid of two of them. So we're gonna go back to the home tab and we're gonna click click on the delete points again and get rid of two of these purple lines and it doesn't matter which two. And then we're going to right click to turn delete points off. And with edit points highlighted, we're going to drag our purple line up to the top of that right half of the leaf. So it's lined up right with those, the direction that the stitches are going. All right, now, we are this time, okay, we're gonna write, no, I don't want you, don't do that. Um, this time we wanna drag our end marker to the bottom of the leaf, okay? On the left half of the leaf, we, start, we put our start marker down there and our end marker was at the top. This time, the left half of the leaf, the start marker is at the top. I mean, sorry, the right half of the leaf, the start marker is the top and the end is at the bottom. That means when it goes to stitch out your leaf, it's going to start down here, it's gonna stitch up to here, it's gonna end here for the left half, and then it's gonna start the right half right where the left half ended and stitch down and end down here at the bottom of the leaf. And therefore you don't have any jump stitches. It stitches out very nicely collected, connected and all in one shape. Make sense? If you wanna see that in action, we can go to the design player and we can stitch it out and see how it does that so nicely for us. Okay. Now, we have a couple more things to do to our leaf to make it more beautiful. So I'm on um, number 103 on page six. 
we're going to select our point create tab again and under pattern fill we're going to select no fill and under satin line we're going to select motif line all right so we're not putting any pattern fill in there and we're going to use a motif line now to tell it which motif line we want we're going to come over here to the right on fill area and line thank you and we are going to um, do the following settings for the under the line tab we're going to the group is going to be universal category is going to be bean stitches one and the pattern is going to be number 10 which looks like a mess mess of stitches all stacked up our minimum gap is zero nothing is checked down here in these four boxes the fit to line reverse kern or mirror all other settings are left alone and we say okay with me yeah got your okay now we're going to say create area or line which is going to make let us use our motif line that we just set up our little we ended our leaf right down here at the bottom and our little pink cursor is there. So we're going to set a point, square points at the bottom of the leaf and at the very top of the leaf. And that tells us where we want our motif line. So once you've set those two points, right click. And it has, what do you do it? Put it there and now we're going to create we've completed our line so we're going to we want to do something else we want to create an outline for the leaf but we're in the middle of the leaf right here so in order to get to the edge of the leaf we're going to come over here and select a running stitch we're just going to do a single stitch right down this line here <clears throat> to get to the edge of the leaf so we can put an edge stitch around the leaf okay so what did you do to me point create running stitch um right here on this we're going to on the pink cursor, we're going to set a square point and we're going to set a second square point at the very edge of the leaf. Okay. So now we, now we have, why are you doing that backwards? I'm going to undo it. Watch, <clears throat> wait. Okay. Now point create running stitch running stitch no pattern no pattern i want to do a running stitch i want to start here and go to here okay did yours work right and didn't have to go back and redo it like i did mine i, so I, I can... have my go ahead Oh, I must have done, what did I do wrong? Because I've got my pink one at the top, top, I mean, the top of the thing. I did something backwards, so go ahead. Well, okay. I'll just... mine, your pink, your pinks, did you do your running stitch line? Not yet. I okay your pink line your pink should be right at the top where i have that start marker right now 
your, your pink well let me go back the bean stitch is what i had the end okay. was at, at the point so i did okay. something so, wrong. okay have you got running stitch selected you have running stitch selected mary no, I think I messed up with my bean stitch, so. Does your bean stitch start at the bottom and go to the top, right up no, the middle? No, that's what I'm saying. It started at the top and went to the bottom. So I did, let me go back a few and see what I did. Oh, now. okay. Did you, oh, did you move your end point when you did the right half of the leaf? Did you move your end point down to the tip of the leaf? yes so okay. okay let me just go back and okay tell me when you're ready i'm 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 fine now i just i don't know what i did but that's okay so i'm okay you you got your running stitch yes. starting at the top and well, okay, I have to put mine back yeah. in. Yeah. Okay, let I'm me I'm all the way to the right side now. Like mine right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So all right. So we should right click so that we so that you should see the start and end points, right? Number one fourteen. Yeah, I think what happened is I probably moved something. I hadn't done the right click is what I think happened to me. Okay, so now we're ready for 115. And in, instead of a running stitch, we're going to go back to a motif line. And then we're going to go back over here to fill area and line to set up our motif stitch. Okay, and we're still in universal, but it, this time the category is stem one, which is the next to the last one in the line and pattern number four. And we're not changing anything, okay? So now we do okay. And now we're on 118 for click area and or create area and line. And we're going to set starting at the pink cursor. We're going to click three additional points to travel to the bottom of the leaf. Okay, and mine aren't quite where they should be, but that's okay. Um, and number 120, it says right click to complete the line. So now you have these diagonal stitches on the edge of the right side of the leaf, okay? Now, number 121 has us go back to fill area and line, and this is cool. And in the options underneath where we told it what motif line to use, number 122, we're going to put a check mark in the box by the word reverse and click OK. And then we're going to create area and line again. So we have a pink cursor at the bottom of the leaf now, the top tip of it. You're going to set again three more points on the left side of the leaf. And when you right click, number 125 then you have those diagonal lines that was good <laughs> let me do that over how did i manage to get all the way over there i thought i set my points right there that's better something happened that i got a goofy point but it right click and right click again So that the create area or line is turned off. So does your leaf look like the one I have? 
maybe? I'm not quite there yet, let me. Okay, was it, I going too fast? I'm sorry. No, I, I had one of those that went haywire. Yep, mine looks that way. Lee Ward, are you still here? Yes, I'm, I'm close, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're funny. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now this, this you is going to really be... see it if you look under life view. Yeah, it's cool. I have a habit of using um, design player rather than life view because I think it gives me a more distinctive um, picture. Hmm. And I know Janie loves life view, but I'd rather do no, design. No, you're right. Design it's player a, does look better. It, it gives you a more defined look. Yeah. Okay. So now we have one out of five leaves, all right? And I don't know whether you've ever used this next tool that we're going to use before, but it, it's pretty cute. Cool. Now, what did you do? Stop that. So where are we? What number are we on? We are on top of page eight at 127. Thank you. I didn't. You're welcome. Okay. So we're going to select the view tab up here at the top and under view mode, we're going to select object view. And what that does is just give you an outline of your shape. It doesn't show you your stitches or stitch points. It just gives you an outline drawing, which is kind of cool because it's it's more accurate as to what where what your your shape is going to be as far as i'm concerned i've used it before and i really liked it all right after all that speech we're going on number 129 we're going back to the home tab and in our film strip we're going to click on the second item and then we're going to hold down our shift key and select the last item. So we have two through seven selected and it's highlighted in your film strip. OK. All highlighted. And then we're going to come up to the film strip up here and click group. So now we have an orange orange bar. We've got Bronco colors in our film strip. We've got an orange bar and full, and the blue stuff below it. So that it has grouped everything we did to create that leaf. All right. And now up at the top above our film strip, we're going to click on the word duplicate. So now we have two of those. And Number 134, where it says click on modify block. And when our pop up block or window comes up, we're going in the rotate section, we're going to type in 72. We want to rotate this guy 72 degrees. Okay, once we've done that, and I need to shrink my thing down so I can see where I'm going. Okay. Then we're going to take the one that's rotated. Be careful that you're just selecting inside the area. Don't do the rotate handle or any of the other handles. Just select inside it and take it and move it up to the next leaf on your left. Like that. Okay. Tell me when you've got your leaf in place. I got it. Lee? I'm getting there. <laughs> How far away are you? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Almost far away? Okay. What's going to happen is that we're going 
each time we duplicate, rotate, and move, we're going to do that to do the other three leaves. Okay. So once you've got your second leaf in place, you're going to duplicate it. You're going to go to modify block. You're going to type in 72 degrees. Only mine says 359. That was good. 72 and say, okay, it will give you a rotated leaf. You will put your cursor inside that leaf and move it to the next position. And you can use your arrow keys to get it exactly where you want it. And then you're going to wash, rinse, repeat again. You're going to duplicate that one, go to modify block, set your rotation at 72, say OK, take that rotated leaf, move it to the next place, and Duplicate it again, modify block, set your rotation at 72, say OK, take that last leaf and move it down to the last place and put it where you want it. And then Once you have all of the leaves in position, I want this next, this leaf. Mine, mine wasn't where I wanted it. And if you have, need to go back and adjust any one of the leaves, each leaf is a group. So you need to go and click on your orange group bar to select the whole leaf, okay? But once you have all of five leaves in place, then you can press Control T. And I don't know, I wasn't familiar with all these commands. Control T, and that takes you back to your 3D view so you can see the stitches in your leaves. Tell me where you are. Cool. Isn't that cool? It is cool. Okay. Lee, how close are you? I got one more to do. <laughs> okay. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, I'm done. Okay, so you have, you can see the stitches in your leaves and all that, right? Yes. So now we're ready on page eight for number 139. We're going to select the quick- Should we save this sucker so we don't lose it? <laughs> yes, ma'am, you may save it. <laughs> Go ahead, Lee, you, if you wanna save yours. Now you're in digitizing, so it's going to save it as a, um, not an easy, whatever it saves, this crazy file. What does it save it as? It saves it in I the don't digit. Remember. Yeah. It saves it in the digitizing format, okay? That's e all right. ECO or something. E ECO, e yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, my brain just <laughs> has had it. <laughs> okay. so. We're going to go to, now that you've got them saved, we're going to go to the Quick Create tab and click Color Change. And now we want um, color number, Rob, Robeson Anton number 2206, which is baby blue. So we're going to be working on our blue flower. And click OK. And now, our pattern fill should still say no fill. And instead of a motif line, we want to say 
satin line. And we want to click the applique button up here where the circle is. And now we're going to go to the, whoop, I should be in the home tab. Why didn't he say, no, nope. where am I? Nope, click create. Oh, fill area in line. It's the, never mind. <laughs> Over on the right hand side. Under satin line, under the line tab, we want our width to be five instead of mine said four. We want our density to be four. We want underlay checked and your start and end point should be highlighted just at the first one. Now click on the applique tab and the applique method should be standard applique. If we click on select fabric, hello, there we go. Then we can pick the color for our fabric for our flower and we probably want blue. And on page nine, it says click OK to tell it that we want that blue color. Um, and then we are ready to click OK in this pop-up box. Now we're going to click, we have satin line, we have applique. Now we're gonna click the icon next to them that says quick stitch. And we're going to click somewhere inside of the blue area of our flower. And then our color tolerance line, the dotted line of red and blue outlines our flower and it did a good job of it. So we're going to say, okay. And now so we Judy, have- So Judy, yes, can you, where was the applique piece margin? Um, what, did, what did I miss? It should be, it was in, I didn't say it, but okay, let me go back. Okay, let me do this. Uh, say, okay, whoops, that was wrong. I got need to go back a couple steps. Okay, when I say quick stitch and do that, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. It was under the uh, fill area and line under applique. Oh, it says, I, and thank you, Mary, mine, it should be zero. Come on. Oh, there. okay. Maybe I didn't get it because my applique wasn't selected. Okay. I'm with you now. Okay. So quick stitch and okay. And oh, good. I did something. Now I got to go back. Sorry. <laughs> no, I got to go back further. Oh, stop. Sorry, I messed you up. No, you didn't. I messed myself up. Okay, cut out. Line. Okay, line. Okay. Oh, I lost. I lost my baby blue color. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. Um, satin. No, set, mm. fill area. Uh, stop it. The baby blue color is underneath the yeah. applique, the drop down under, not there, the one up at the top, that applique, look at the drop down, it'll say select fabric, the, the drop down arrow on the oh. bottom of that. There but I, go. I, I've got the fabric, it's the satin line that's killing me. Oh, okay. So let me add that in. Okay, and I want, come on. I want that to go all the way. Okay. All right. Now let's see if I can do it right. Quick stitch. Okay, there we go. Somehow I managed to lose the color over in my 
color bar. All right, oh, so now okay. we've, we've got a blue fabric flower applique with a yeah. I want to I want to see something. Okay, we didn't set the points on this, and um, bear with me for a second here. I want to see, see where it put the start and end point. When you have any kind of a satin line, you never want to start and end at a corner because it 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 yucks it up. That's all I know. That's the only way I know to say it. It yucks it up. So. Um, what I when I did this at home when I had a bigger screen to look at, let me see if I can see it on there. It it started up here and it did the point, but when it ended, it ended right here across here, and it was very distinct that you could see uh, a line there. So. I was unhappy with that and I moved I moved my start and end points. No, don't do that. Stop that. Okay. I insert a a point, I think, and changed my start and end point over to the edge where it was more straight rather than it was than it so it didn't start and end right at a point. Okay. All right. So I inserted a point and then I moved my start and end points to that point that I inserted. So it started on a a long run rather than on uh, the very edge. If that makes any sense, because I didn't like the way that it looked right here because it ended I thought very ugly <laughs> all right so just be aware that you know you really don't want to start and end at a corner regardless and thankfully we can change that okay all right um where are we Number 150. Let's see. Click inside the blue color to my right click to deselect the two. All right. So now I don't want to select anything. In the color number 150, oh, let's do 150. Click color change under. I guess we're still on quick create. Um, under color change, we want now to pick the color for our pink flower, and that is color number 2426 raspberry. So that adds it to our design panel over here. And over in the design panel, while you're checking out the raspberry color, come to number two and uncheck that in the box because our blue applique was covering up our pink flower and our center and we couldn't digitize them when we couldn't see them so that's why we're unchecking the blue flower it's still there it didn't go anywhere it when we uncheck it it no longer shows up in the film strip but it hasn't gone away it'll be back the minute we put that little check mark back all right, so 152, our number, we're below the fill button. We're going to select spiral fill, which is about in the middle of the list. <clears throat> and then below for our line, we're going to select no border line. And then we're going to turn off our applique 
because we don't want to applique the pink. Now we're going back to our fill area and line. And gradient over here on the right hand side should be checked. The density, <clears throat> let's see, the left marker, okay. This little, looks like a little house, should be density two. So that's two. And now we're gonna select the little house on the right and we're going to change that density to 32. Okay. <laughs> yep. Have good ones. Okay. Now that we've got, where'd you go? All right. So it's set at 2 and 32. And we're going to click OK. Now we are going to, as soon as I can find it, zoom to rectangle, and we're going to drag our box around the top pink petal. We're going to select quick stitch right here, and we're going to click inside the pink petal. Our color tolerance comes up, it outlined it beautifully. And we're gonna say, okay. And now it's put <laughs> this bullseye right in the middle of our little pink petal. And so we're gonna right click to deselect our quick stitch tool. And when we do that, we get the points around our petal and we get an orange zero or it's an O for the origin marker. And we can move our bullseye down to the very edge of the yellow circle to make our spiral fill look like we want it to. Okay. The other thing that we want to do is to move our start and end markers from the top of the petal down to the lower left corner. Of our pink petal there. All right. Your petal look like mine. I'll fly it out there. Oh, I'm I'm working. I think my yes. Lee. Lee's awful quiet. I'm good. <laughs> okay. We've got F sixteens flying over, so I muted myself. Okay. <laughs> All righty. <clears throat> so now we're going to number top of page 10, number 164. <clears throat> we're going to select point create. <clears throat> and now for our fill, we're going to select no fill. And for our line, we're going to go back and select motif line, quit that, no fill. Motif, no fill, quit being spiral fill. What is the deal here? Fill, no fill. Why is it doing it? Ah. 
One second here. Mine looked like yours. See, it's not highlighted. It doesn't change the top. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a Friday and it's getting late. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I haven't had my afternoon snack. All right. <clears throat> so no fill and motif line. Okay. So now we got to tell it what we want for our motif line again. So we're over to fill area and line. And we are going under the line tab. We're in universal group still. This time we're in candle wicking two. And we are in pattern seven. And this time we are having, we're going to check the word kern over on the right hand side, which will make it follow the line. And we're going to uncheck reverse, which we had checked before. So only kern is checked. All the other three are not checked. And we're not changing anything else. We're going to say, okay. Now we are going in point create, we are in, we're creating an area or line, and we are going to set points just like in the illustration on in your handout of our pink cursor is right down here where our start and end points were previously. So we're going to start out the pink cursor with a square point, and then we're going to set three points on this edge here because it takes three points to make a curved line. And then we're going to put a square one at the top, and we're going to put three more over here on the right hand side, and a square one down here at the bottom where we meet up with the yellow center and then we are going to right click and we get our candle wicking stitches okay so now we have that fancy little gradient stitch outlined with candle wicking stitches in the middle of our petal All set. All set. Lee? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So now we are on number 172. We're going to the home tab. And in the film strip, select number 35 which is a spiral fill and hold down the shift key, select number 36, which is our candle wicking line. And we're going to group them. And anybody want to guess what comes next? Duplicate. Duplicate, rotate, move. Duplicate, rotate, move. Okay. Sound like an exercise coach. <laughs> right. So let's do it. We're going to go oh, first. Before we do that, we're going to do number 176. We're going to go to our object view so we can line it up better than if we use it with the 3D view. OK. And then we're going to go back. to home tab, which he doesn't say there, between 176 and 177. Go back to the home tab. And now with that top pedal selected, click duplicate, click modify block. Guess what angle we're using? 72. And click OK. This time we're going to drag them to the right instead of to the left and put it in position. 
it's there. So I'm going to duplicate, modify block, type in 72 to rotate, say OK, move it down to the kind of five o'clock position. It's there. I do my duplicate, modify block, rotate 72 degrees. OK. Move it over to the 7 o'clock position. Whoops. Need some arrow work here. OK. Got one more to go, so I'm going to duplicate again. Modify 72 degrees. OK. And move it up to the 1030 position. And now I have all five of them in there where I want them. Number 181 says press Control T to give me back my 3D view. And if you haven't zoomed to fit, zoom to fit so you can see the whole thing. And now we are on page 11, number 183. Have you got your flower all with all its little gradient petals in the middle of it? And are ready to create your center? Mary? Oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I mean, yes. Lee? I'm good. All right, so yours looks like mine? Kinda? Sorta. Of. Kinda. <laughs> <laughs> okay, page 11, number 183. Quick create tab. Okay, we're gonna Click on color change and we're going to pick out a yellow. Well, he wants specific colors. So 2325 lemon color. Say OK. Now on the fill button, this time we're going to select curved crosshatch, the third from the bottom. All right. And on the Line one, we're going to select satin line. And we're going to click applique again, the top part. And then we are going to our fill area in line to set our specifics. So under options tab, the first one, our gap is going to be 6.0. Under below the gap, you have curved crosshatch lines one, curve in 50, curve out 50, lines two, curve in 50, curve out 50. So all four of those numbers should be 50. On the right hand side, under style, we want diamond. We want over to the right where it says diamond angle. We want 60. And the stitch type is motif line. That's all we change in that tab. OK. You ready to go on? Yes. Lee? You there, Lee? 
Yes, I'm, want... staying, I'm staying muted. We've got these F-16s flying over the house from Buckley, so. Oh, okay. I'm I'll sorry, I can't, I can't see. i my head, okay. Are you ready? Okay, so we're gonna go to motif and we're gonna pick out our motif. Again, we're in universal. We're gonna go back to bean stitches one. We're gonna select pattern number two and change nothing else. Then we're going to the line tab. Our width is gonna be four, 4.0. Our density is gonna be four. Underlay is checked. Closed borderline is checked. Insert color change unchecked. Okay. Then in the applique tab, we're standard applique. We're going to click on select fabric and we're going to pick yellow fabric this time and say applique type is going to be quick and i already picked yellow and say okay and page 12 oh applique piece margin is going to be zero so now we're ready to click okay now we're going to select quick stitch after we have all this other stuff selected here we're going to click inside the yellow we get our color tolerance window and that annoys me that it always pops up and on top of what i want to see but it did a good job and we're going to say okay so now we have this cute little thing that looks like a button with our curved crosshatch on it. Okay, and we want to right click to deselect our quick stitch tool. So we're now ready for 193 on page 12. With me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Lee. We're going to go to 193 on page 12. We're going to select the point create tab. <clears throat> Under the options here on the right hand side, we're going to select, wait a minute, the, the column one and drop the little open that up and we're going to pick feathered satin the second option and when our pop-up box comes up we're going to change our density to 12. we're going to have both which means both sides and our stitch length is going to be five and then we are going to click okay now we have let's see oh all right so we're going to zoom so we can see this really well zoom to rectangle come on whoopsie there zoom to rectangle move over we're going to click up here in the upper left by our color change icon we have a single stitch icon so we're going to select that and our little pink cursor shows up and he's in the middle of our satin stitch but we want him up on the top so we're just going to click on him and move him up aren't we come on up see daisy come on you are just being a little turp come on i want you up here so instead of trying to move him i just clicked up above him and he went up to the top 
if you're having That's problems. Just to put a single stitch, right? Yeah. Okay. So now um, that was 197. Now click on the top center of the yellow satin stitch to move it up. Okay, that's, I didn't do what they said. I didn't read. Okay, so now we're gonna come up, up in our ribbon bar up here and we're gonna click on this feathered satin icon. And we're going to set points to do a satin column. So you have to set inside and outside points as pairs. So kind, they have kindly given us a drawing of where we should be setting our points. So our first point is going to be right on our pink cursor. Our second point is going to be right below it. And the little red words under 201 says we've clicked pairs of points between each petal and at the center of each petal to make the positions easy to find. So I'm going to come over here and click outside, inside, to the middle of the next one, outside, inside, to the between them, outside, inside. I'm going to do that all the way around my circle. Okay, between the petals and in the center of the petals. When I get around to the edge, it will not let me put a point right on top of an existing point. So I'm going to set a point a little ways to the left of it and the other one and once I've set my points, then I come, can come back and drag them and put them right on top of my original points and right click to make my feathered set. Sure is beautiful. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Lee. Look at that. My goodness. Isn't that cool? It's incredible. But I you never could have kept up that long. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're still here to yeah. see it. I've been watching. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> it and really right. is a, a cool thing to see how they did all the fancy stuff, isn't it? I know. There's so much to it, my goodness. All right, so now I'm going to zoom to real life, and then I'm going to go back to um, my color selection bar over here in the design panel and put my click back in number two, my check mark. And so now I have all of my pieces there. I'm going to go to the home tab and say select none. And so there it is. Ta da! Ta da! And we can go to design player. And <clears throat> I can't get to my arrows. Move over. We can speed this puppy up. It's going to stitch all of our leaves first with our bean stitches and our motif stitches on the edges. It's kind of cool. <laughs> and it was going to do the applique of that blue flower. Yeah, Thanks. yeah, yeah. Thanks for giving us the final. We appreciate it. <laughs> the VP3. <laughs> Thank you I for love, giving. I love those gradiated flowers or petals in the middle. 
Yeah, and I think sometimes I forget about all the things you can move to yeah. get the stitches to go the way you would like. You know, uh -huh. I just don't do it enough, I guess. Yeah, and now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get lazy. And there's, you know, I just am marvel at the brain power that it takes to come up with something like this. But when you look at the, the shapes that you have available to you, I was just, I brought up that box of shapes and I looked at it and I thought, what could, what shape can I take and I can do something cool like this with it? I know. And then, you know, if you use the encore or this technique here, whatever, the multiply all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and I was thinking, well, what if you put a spiral in the middle of it? Oh, yeah. That yeah. would be fun. You know, because you can you can tell it how many petals you really want. You, you've got so many ways to modify those things. Yeah. So, 